for me, one of the best parts about kind of growing with this culture has been to always stay true to the ideals that it first started. We're not here to try to convince people of what it is. Mm -hmm. We're here to offer you these facts that you have not been presented before. You haven't even seen the evidence. You're basing your opinion on what you've been shown, but not everything else. I think it's hard to divorce people from their politics, Kev. It is, man. Because it's their tough. politics is not just politics. It's their entire circle of friends. It's the echo chamber that right. comes with it's it. It's the family that they're with. It's you, who you follow on Instagram. It's, it's telling what you, the algorithm It's telling people you. to leave your family. Yeah, it's right? crazy. So people have gotten to a point where it doesn't matter the morality of the person that's been assigned to it. As long as it's their side, they can find a reason to not hold that person to the same standards as they would somebody else. And at that point, it's just so politicized that there's no moral left in it. It's not like there's a moral compass. There's just like, oh, okay, imagine if your lawyer, your, your son goes to, to trial for murder, right. right? The best lawyer in the world has a 14-year-old wife. Pfft. And you're like... Dude, he's the best lawyer in the world, though. Right. <laughs> what are we doing here? That's where we are in politics. And, you know, we don't even have a shared history. You saw the governor of Florida get up and say, hey, it's wrong that we to, teach. To say that we, were, we, we have we're stolen, stolen land. Yeah, yeah. Right? Literally, yeah, it's crazy. Like, I was going to ask you, man, because we're probably, it's funny because I remember as a kid how much people did not fuck with George W. Bush at a certain point. I remember like that Michael Moore shit came out. Uh, mm -hmm. I forget then it was a Bowling 9-11 or some shit. Uh, the, 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 the first documentary that kind of like was like kind of political. People weren't fucking with Bush, but then there was people who were loving Bush. But now, man, this shit is so crazily divided. And I feel like the pendulum on each side has swung so extreme mm -hmm. that like if somebody, like you said, if somebody is just a, a normal, common sense human being. Like you said, like, I feel like I probably, I grew up like a Democrat, right? But I feel like more and more, I'm just like, maybe I'm just like an independent or uh, a libertarian. I don't know. Because like you said, like, I'm also very pro Second Amendment. Um, but nowadays, man, it's like, everybody and it's probably always been like this but it's a little bit more magnified these days because of social media but i just feel like we're in this like weird rut as a country where like everybody is just so standing on whatever this island is and whatever this island's going for at the time you have to align with all of it or you're on you're over there mm. like i would like i would have well, the truth is if you bring up a good point democrats have never fought against Republicans as hard as they fought against the left wing of their own party. Facts. That's the God. That's the God's honest truth. And a lot of people that I personally know that started getting closer to Trumpism and to MAGA. And I, I listen. This is the God. Listen, if you if your feelings get hurt, I, I'm I'm not here to coddle you. A lot of those people were actually Bernie Sanders supporters, and they feel Crazy. and they feel. That the Democratic Party is more corrupt than the well, Republican. Well, they fucked Bernie but, over two two the, times in a but row. But they they feel like it's more corrupt. I think when we talk about the war being involved in it, that's one thing where I have to draw a line because Republicans can't hide behind Trump's skirt simply because he didn't start any new wars. He dropped a Moab on Afghanistan, and after the first eighteen months of his presidency, please look it up. The drone strikes started again. However. That doesn't excuse them pushing Democrats to a point where they had to have Mr. Obama commit a series of war crimes because the drone strikes that he was uh, uh, sending out to Afghanistan were based on metadata. That's why they gave him the name the Drone Ranger, right? Uh, because those metadata, the metadata literally means a phone, or a device. So you're basing it on a phone that this person could have. At. Right. Which is why when they exposed the rate of the drone strikes, they found out that it was over 80 and 90% the wrong person that they hit. And why did we have to learn that through WikiLeaks? That's just unfair to the people themselves who right. pay taxes into a system where they believe they were actually fighting a war against people trying to kill us. Whereas we knocked over a country that had nothing to do with 9-11. Nothing. And then when we get really 
really into detail. Remember the, the that lady Sarah Palin, mm-hmm. and everybody was making fun of her because she couldn't answer what the Bush doctrine was. Mm-hmm. Listen, the Bush doctrine, ladies and gentlemen, is us knocking over countries in the Middle East that don't follow our hegemonic view of the region. Tell me that Mr. Obama didn't do that once Mr. Bush got out of office. He did the same thing. That's the issue that we're facing. We're facing the nakedness of the empire, the mask taken off, the revealing of the fact that we don't actually care if a place is democratic or communist or any of these things. As long as you back the United States of America, we'll give you a pass. Mm. In the same way that I see these horrible things, the, the, the arguments that are happening online in between uh, uh, black people and Jewish people over what's transpired with Kanye, Kanye and everything. Yeah. And I say the sad part is that if you look at actual conservatives that have said horrible things about Jewish people, they're not their bank given, accounts didn't get touched. They're not touched, but it's also because they supported the state of Israel in the same sentence. Mm. So this complicates the case very much. And I think it's actually damaged the relationship that black and Jewish people have because they feel like they've been singled out and the other group feels like they've been singled out. I think that more than ever needs some kind of healing, some kind of reciprocity to understand because you have an entire group of people who say, well, there's different consequences for us versus that. And that makes people feel like their lives aren't worth the same. Right. Right. And I think on the other end, you have a group of people who have felt that they've been persecuted in Europe and now they're persecuted here and therefore high up on end. And whether you agree with anything the man said or not, you have legitimate divide in the community now where people are arguing that didn't even have a problem or were in consciousness to argue argue before. So like you said, the political lines are already kind of drawn there for a person if they wanted to crawl into that trench to then feel comfortable with because they don't have to listen to an opposing opinion. Like you said, there's a lot of echo chambers. There's a lot of places where people just hear something repeated. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to say, okay, well, Republicans have actually never shrunk in the size of government, that Democrats have committed war crimes right. in the past two, two decades. These are not comfortable topics, but they're true. And that's the reason why I guess people love my music, because I give it to both sides, because I don't pull punches, and because when it comes down to it, I'm not just independent in terms of the music, but I try to be independent here in front of the politics, because I realize what's actually happened as a case of this. Now, we could take subject matters independently, right? right? Like immigration, abortion, we can discuss all these things. Of course. But with that comes... It's historical nuance, right? When people say, oh, immigrants, you got everything. And I'm like, well, why don't you look up the Homestead Act or the Dawes Act, where this government gave millions of acres to white settlers that just came off a boat from somewhere because you wanted indigenous people to be replaced. Mm. We hear a lot from the far right about uh, a white replacement theory, but let's have a conversation about indigenous replacement practice yeah, that like took a- place. the actual reality of that, yeah. So I think... In many ways, it's not that people are angry at socialism, Kev. They're mad that only rich people have been able to use it, that they got billions of dollars of bailouts, and that nobody who lost their home got any bailouts. Yeah, I always say, like, socialism, like, obviously, I think, like, I was a Bernie supporter. I donated to his campaign. I loved, I loved Bernie. I just loved him because he was the most consistent politician I had ever seen, at least. He was very honest in the sense that, you know, when you heard that... Uh, Hillary Clinton calling him a, a, a violent misogynist. Everyone was scratching their head like, you talk about your husband? Yeah, you she, talk about she, Bernie. She's wild. What are we doing here? Yeah, 